Dr. Seuss, as we know, once told a child's fable of the Grinch who was quite unable to steal the cheer that the holidays brought and about the lesson that he was taught. But if you'll let me in here or two, I'll tell you a similar story. That's new. It's about a man who commits a crime but discovers the truth that's older than time. It's a prime example of intellectual snobbery in what came to be known as the Great Church Robbery. The church was known for its love and affection and invited folks in from every direction. But to one neighbor named Mr. DeWitt, their invitations didn't matter one bit. DeWitt hated them and for the Christian religion, he had no love, not even a smidgen. He considered their pastor to be a big fake. And the clanging of the church bells made his head ache, though he felt that way not because of his head, but the fact that his soul was spiritually dead. They'll all be returning, he said with a bark, for tonight's service as soon as it's dark. And then with their worship, they'll raise a commotion. But why they must do it, I haven't a notion. They'll set that big church bell to ringing, and then begin worship and singing. They'll pound their piano and organ too, but what it's about, I haven't a clue. Why, for too many years I've put up with this stuff. It's driving me crazy, and I've had quite enough. As he got angry thinking of how they would do it, he suddenly snapped. I must put a stop to it. Then a wicked idea hit his wicked old brain. I'll pretend I'm a blind man with dark glasses and cane. I'll steal all their things, and if anyone spies me, in my clever getup, they won't recognize me. He cranked up his pickup and took off with the lurch and pulled it up to the back door of the church. Yes, he felt quite proud and thought himself wise, so armed with a plan and a clever disguise. Determined that his entry nothing would block, he used a credit card to jimmy the lock. This is too easy. The fake black man hissed. As he tipped it aside, Kane clenched in his fist. This story, he said, are the first thing I'll steal. As he loaded them onto his track, the old heel. When he carried all he could rob, he was turning a goal and then he heard a small sock. Grabbed me his cane, he spun in a whirl, and there by the altar stood a little girl. Who's there? He asked while tapping the cane. You see, I'm quite blind and I don't know your name. My dad is a pastor and I'm very silly. Then with trembling voice she asked, Who are you? Just a friend, he said. There's no need to fear. As he motioned the little girl to draw near. You see, God sent me indeed, for though I am blind, I can tell you're in need. I'm taking the old out and bringing in new, and when I'm finished, I'll send it to you. Oh, kind sir, I wonder if you might pray that the Lord would give you a sight. And before he can answer, but by the way, she lay her small hands on his brow to pray. Dear Jesus, thank you for being so kind. I ask that you touch this man who is blind. Bring the light to his eyes and help him to see. So give him the gift, Lord, and help him to see. And when she had finished, his throat was all dry, and behind his dark glasses a tear dimmed his eye. The conviction had fallen on him like a great way, but he croaked. Thank you, thank you, dearie, but now I'll be late. So go on home and don't say a word. And don't tell anyone of what you have heard. They know by now that the services there have all been done in. They're wailing and moaning and they'll all shed a tear. That's something that I wish I could hear. But he could hear a sound, quiet and low, rising up from the church in the valley below. But this sound wasn't cheerful. Why, it sounded quite cheerful. Everyone there, to the smallest fella, was singing their favorite songs, a cappella. He hadn't stolen their joy, it remained. In spite of their losses, they worshiped the same. Maybe their joy doesn't come from what's done. Perhaps it comes from someone. Lord, I know I was wrong these church things to take, so save them, and me also, for Jesus' sake. As the light of heaven shone in, Mr. DeWitt was born again. He found a strange power he'd not felt before, and 
down the streets of Simpson and more. He stopped that old truck and turned it around. Then he hopped up inside and drove down to town.